to Lethal Hammer's channel. Today what I wanted to do is take a look at the Swift Tech 350 pump. I actually got a couple of them here. And adding a top to it. And for those of you who don't know much about water cooling, uh, this is really more of a water cooling 101 video. Um, just to give you a quick breakdown on uh, how your water cooling system should work, it should always start with the pump. You want to look at that and and take in mind what you're going to be water cooling, whether it's your CPU, your chipset, your GPU, your your memory, whatever. Um, whatever your water cooling, you want to keep in mind. You want good flow, and you don't want too many uh, blockages or things that are going to slow down that flow. So, um, but the the first thing you always want to do is look at a good pump. So, depending on again how big your system is, let's just say we're working with just a CPU cooled system. Um, most people will go the standard way of just pump, reservoir, radiator um, to the the block, obviously, um, for whatever you're cooling. So in this case, the CPU. And that's about it. I mean, it doesn't really take too much. Uh, some people will leave out the reservoir and just do pump, you know, block, and radiator. That works as well, you know, if you know exactly what you're doing and how to get your air bubbles out of your system. Uh, but in general... Most people will go from a CP or from a pump to a radiator, from the radiator to their their device. So in this case, a CPU uh, block, from the block to the reservoir, and from the reservoir back into the pump. Uh, that's typically the best route you want to go. Um, I would always recommend going from the pump to your radiator. Um, but let's get into the actual details of this. Um, pump. So this is a Swift Tech MCP350. Uh, it's probably one of the most common pumps you'll see on the market outside of the big MCP650, which is the big beast you'll see that's usually a lot more expensive. Um, you can usually pick these up anywhere from 25 to 35 bucks. Uh, they come with a 3 8 inch inflow or in and out uh, for the ports. Um, it is a plastic barb fitting. Um, pretty decent, straightforward. Sorry, you'll see some of my double-sided tape still left over from when I was using this pump. Um, but it's a straightforward pump. It has a couple mounts on either side, so if you want to physically mount it to your case, you could do that. Uh, they give you some options. Um, hands down, decent pump. If you have it in a, in a not-too-stressful environment, such as not going through too many radiators or having to really work to get uh, a good flow, this pump will last you a couple years. Um, take in mind, water cooling, your pumps can go at any moment. Um, that's one of the biggest kind of flaws of water cooling in general is, you know, any good water cooler has a backup pump. <laughs> and don't ask me why, but it just, I haven't had a pump fail on me yet, but there's been a lot of stories I've seen online where their pump failed and temperature still rose, even though there was water and you know, say goodbye to your precious high-end components. So, but today I wanted to touch base on really the pump and how you can make it better. So, again, standard um, water cooling, you'll see 3 8 inch uh, inlet outlet. Uh, it's pretty common. Um, some of the more uh, heavy-duty overclockers, I guess you can say, are more people who are used to doing water cooling will jump into a half-inch, three-quarter inch size tubing. Um, and that's where coming in with a top comes in handy, but I mean the top still comes in handy even more if you're doing a 3 8 inch still all around. So the reason for a top, and again, not saying that Swift Tech did a bad job. I mean, obviously they spent the money and researched and developed, but adding a top just gives you more, uh, more pressure at the head. Um, which is pretty much where it's pushing the water out. You know, the more pressure you have, the more, uh, or I shouldn't say the more, but the more pressure you have, the better flow you got, and, um, you know, less restrictive when you start adding components such as radiators and CPU uh, loops. Um, so this block in general, um, outside of the standard plastic that has like an O-ring inside, um, this is made out of a settle. Uh, it's kind of a carbon... Uh, based material. Uh, don't don't let people fool you in saying a settle is a bad uh, product. Uh, in general, a settle is 
really a replacement for copper, nickel, whatever you want, metal in general. You know, it's really low friction. Um, it's a great, uh, I guess you can call it like a carbon based product, but I mean, it's, it's low rare, low wear overall and, uh, just made really well. And EK has done really good job in custom making products around a settle. Um, you know, they make different colors. I believe they offer white, they offer black. Um, some other companies may offer other colors, but it doesn't really matter. But, um, they're really easy to install. Um, as you can see at the bottom, there's four screws on these pumps. You unscrew it. Uh, the top actually comes with just the top and screws to mount. You won't use the standard screws that came with the pump. Um, and then you'll reuse the O-ring that's inside your pump already. So it's pretty straightforward and easy. I mean, I'll show you really quick what is inside a brand new box. You'll see the instructions on uh, about the product and how to install it. Open it up. You get EK's quality packaging. Uh, the mounting screws, obviously. Let me open this up. It's a brand new top. And you'll see the bottom. It's very flat. You'll see the flow. Let's see if I can get the correct angle so you can see it. It's just directly open. You'll see it's threaded instead of the barb. So that way you can use compression fittings or angles, elbows, anything that you want to use. Um, instead of just the regular plastic barb that, in my opinion, are a pain in the butt to deal with. But getting back to the the situation at hand is, you know, the, the 350 is a great pump. So, I mean, if you're looking to cool your system and get great flow and not worry about, you know, uh, too much resistance and causing wear and tear on the pump over time, it makes sense to get a top. Uh, the top itself, one, uh, allows the pump to perform above and beyond its original spec. Um, gives you great flow, great head pressure, and really just increases the life of your pump overall. Um, I've seen stories that uh, say these pumps last a very long time, and I've seen stories that say these pumps can fry up in two weeks. You know, I think in a lot of cases it's user error or possibly not priming the pump, uh, but there you have it. I mean, just a regular basic basic pump, and then adding a top to it, you'll see the style is somewhat better looking with the top. Uh, just depends on uh, what you like and what you're looking for. If you look back at some of our older videos, you'll see in our Corsair Obsidian 800D case, um, I was running two of these 350 pumps inside the 5.25 inch bay. Uh, You'll see on this one, I ended up cutting off the, the mounting hardware or the plastic mounting stuff so it would fit. But you can squeeze those into tight quarters and tight areas and make them work. So, um, pump seat cells, like I said, they're 25, 35 bucks. You know, you can get the top, I believe they're anywhere from 18 to 25 bucks, depending where you get them. Um, great products overall. I have not had any problems with these pumps or these tops, no leaking, no bad wear, no bad tear. Um, so, a settle, great product, great stuff. They use them also in water blocks and for your GPU and your CPU and I definitely recommend it. So, that is the EKDDC X-Top version 2 and uh, we appreciate you watching our channel and check out lethalpc.com for more information and more news and reviews on enthusiast PC items.